so tell me first things first uh what is that exact moment do you remember that you decided that you will become a chef you know what it was in year 12 and we had to do for school and we had to do home economics and i made jars of jam and then i did a folder of recipes and i developed all that and i said this is definitely what i want to do i want to do culinary cooking and then that's when i applied at hotel sofitel where gary was the executive chef there and then and george was an apprentice um gary was the executive chef but i didn't know who george was or gary back then but that's when i just kind of knew i wanted to i always love food i'm greek that's all we think about is food 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 so then that's when i was like okay i think this is what i want to do Yeah, but uh, you uh, chose pastry as a speciality. Is there a reason for that? Pastry was a mistake. So I originally was a savory chef, and then I was a bit naughty at at, at work. And then they said, you know, Anna, we're going to get rid of you. You're too much trouble. This and that. Because you know, when you're younger, you just want to go out and have fun with your friends. You know, have a few drinks at bars and not really focus on work so much. And then we had a culinary competition. And I said we don't we need someone for pastry and I said okay I'll do the pastry side and then for there I was like I had to train I had to learn so I was putting myself I used to work um on my days off after hours to learn how to do pastry and then I learned that I really really loved what I did and it just changed everything and then after that I just kept on doing competitions and that's how I got my scholarship over to the UK um and did more pastry and I did university there as well Wow did you look up to somebody for inspiration You know, there's always different people and I inspire people that are next to me. So my mother is a very strong influence in my life. Um a strong female influence. You know, she will put us all in line at home. But the way that she cooks and the way that she feeds us all and she puts us all together and it's an, and food for her is not a cost. She will buy the best for us. So we're never without. And then I think Julie Sharp who is my mentor who really nurtured me in my culinary cooking. Um I have a lot of respect. Um I never use naughty words in front of her. There's that complete respect um with her and she really looked after me and nurtured me when I was in London as well. So I really love her for that. Yeah, so what's the most challenging thing about being a chef? Um I think the most challenging thing is time management, making sure that you balance your lifestyle together and also remembering to breathe. You know, it's such a high pressure environment. So you'll see that when I'm in the car I actually play classical music. So if you know so when I'm driving I always have piano music and I just breathe and breathe and breathe through it um because I just need some downtime and that really helps me through everything. And what's the most satisfying thing about being a pastry chef when you know when you're baking and all what kind of satisfaction you get? You know what it is for me it's 100% customer service. Like for me guest is the most important thing when they're smiling engaging getting excited that is so much to me but also creating a dessert and you get really excited doing it like when i do master chef or dessert masters i get excited about creating beautiful food that i am proud of and then i give it to someone else and they love it as well so i think that's really important and you know just cooking at home for loved ones and they're eating and they're smiling and i will never eat until they've started so i yeah. can see face expressions Oh lovely. So it is high pressure. So what is it I mean you there are you're bound to go wrong sometimes, you know. So what is that one thing that you always get right? There's something you confidently like close your eyes and make it. The end result is always right, you know. So I think that is always so there might be the high pressure that um you do you execute it and then the end result is always perfect. So no one ends up seeing the back end of things, only see the front end and that's what's important. Customers don't need or guests or whoever's dining with you it doesn't need to see the hustle at the back they just need to see the beautiful stuff at the front yeah and what's your favorite dessert oh gold buraco so it's a semolina custard um and it's greek and it's filo pastry so crispy filo pastry a honey syrup it's got different spices you bake it off in the oven and then when it comes out you pour the um cold syrup you got to do it cold because you got a hot dessert with a cold and you got to get the crispiness and you got to let it cool down but i can't i just get straight in there with my fork and i start eating it and my favorite pastry shop is over in melbourne called vanilla and it's all greek family run business and i sit down and a piccolo coffee comes i haven't even ordered and my gal at the border corner they serve it warm for me and i was like oh my god like that's why i go to melbourne all the time 
Yeah, so <coughs> this is your first visit or you visited India earlier? This is my third visit. Third visit. So where are, where all have you been? Um so far. Ah. Oh god. Um I've been to Mumbai, we've been Hyderabad is currently my favorite and then a few other places as well. So because previously we went as well, so I can't remember before, but now with this trip is is definitely memorable because we're not just working, we're also experiencing the cities thanks to Kanosh. I think Kanosh is very much family run business where the culture is all about hospitality. It's not just work work work. It's also educating and letting us see the city and you know immerse ourselves with the culture as well but also with the food which is so nice so uh what do you think of the food scene in india from what you've seen i mean you know i i find that indian cuisine um very technical like it's not like anybody can sit there and make the food at all mm. because you got to think about the flavors are so robust and the technique of cooking the dish so i find it very interesting where there's spiciness and then you got the yogurt that breaks down the hotness and also cool uh the different textures is a lot of curries but also a lot of um I love the breads like all the different breads and the condiments to go with it um desserts are definitely um I really like as well but, and because I, some of it is very similar to greek which I like um but it's definitely it's it's great I'm really enjoying it and as you start eating it more you start loving it more as well Yeah. So I'm definitely going to be eating a lot more in um in Australia as well. I'm going to be trying to cook it in Australia. <laughs> so are you, I'm going to be successful. So are you carrying home recipes from India? <laughs> well, I have to because my mother's rang me up just before this interview and she's like, "I need you to get me the copper pot the pot dish that you had yesterday. I want the recipes. I want you to make me these because her best friend is Indian." So she goes, "I want these and I want my friend to come over to cook for you cook for her." I'm like, "I can't cook Indian. <laughs> get your friend to cook Indian for us." <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. So, what did you like in uh, Hyderabad? Whatever you had so far. Oh my god! What's the um the rush dish with the meat underneath? I absolutely love. With the um with the the copper di- um the dum biryani pot, the dum biryani yes. yeah. I think that's very beautiful because the, obviously the meat is comes through the rice and the fact that you have to dig for it. I love that because it's a bit of a surprise, and you definitely have to eat it meat. I know there's a vegetarian version but I I really like the meat aspect of it. I really love that. I love all the different breads. Like the naan breads and everything. I really love that. I love the fact that it's like using it to pick up your food. Like I really love that. So yeah. And I did have the apricot delight. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. That is so good. I did you also have uh, kubani ka meetha? That's also apricot. Yes, That's the one you had? Yes, that was so good. Yeah. So good. loved it and then i was like do i eat more do i eat more no no but i'm going to let it go because i kept them tasting so many different things yeah and then we've been just eating out all the time it's been great nice no, lovely so all the best and uh, looking forward to seeing you again thank, thank you, you so I, much i have to come back it's a beautiful city yes did you explore anything in hyderabad yet we're, we're going to go see we went to ru yesterday and we had dinner there um we're going today to obviously the chocolate shop which i'm so excited about Um and then we fly out tomorrow. So a short okay. trip but a very good quality trip. We're meeting a lot of the locals which we love. Amazing, amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.